Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's fantastic to see you all here again today. Now, since my last video, I've been putting together a little bit of camera gear and I want to go through my, I guess, my consolidation of equipment as I move further into 2021. Um, so I've got a few new bits and pieces. Some of it you've already seen and some of it you may be aware of because I've been putting a few images out there on uh, Facebook and Instagram. But the first bit of kit that I'd like to show you is this baby here. Now this is a Nikon Z6. Nothing special about that. I've got my 20mm f1.8 lens there which you know that I use all the time. What's different about this camera is that it is actually astro modified. So uh, what does that mean? Well essentially I sent this camera in to a place in Melbourne called Camera Clinic and they do what is known as a H alpha mod. In other words this camera sees more reds to put it really simple um, and hydrogen alpha is uh, the nebulas and galaxies up there in the night sky are full of that and standard cameras sometimes struggle a fair bit to actually see the extra detail in that and by changing the the optics in this now I'm not going to go into anything scientific because it's not my uh, area of expertise at all but they changed the filter system in here and they changed the what the camera can see. They've extended the range and they call it an extended range modification. This is not a full spectrum modification so it doesn't see infrared and all that sort of thing. All it does is see more of what's known as the hydrogen alpha. So H alpha for short. So what does that really mean? Well what it means is a few things actually. Um, it's sensitive to the deep red colors as I said but it also um, means that it changes the whole color balance of the camera and I've had a little bit of experimentation. It's taken me quite a while to get used to the different white balance. Now a lot of you are going to say to me, who cares? You're shooting raw, you can change the white balance later on. Yeah, of course you can do that. But as you know from a lot of my videos, I, I don't like to just shoot in any old white balance. What I like to do is set a white balance and have, have something set in camera and leave it there. Now this is even further complicated by my use of light painting. As you know, my photography and my nightscape images are generally centered around light painted foreground subjects. So by altering the, the color balance, which is what this does, then that definitely alters the way that that happens. So I've been playing around with it. So what I've decided on doing with this is to set my white balance to a lower Kelvin, about 32, 3500 Kelvin, and see how that goes. And sometimes I need to adjust the tint because when you do this H-alpha mod, there's a whole lot of magenta th that is increased. So I tend to want to boost up the greens a little bit. Now, Typically with the Z6, I'm, I'm adjusting the other way and taking away the greens and adding magenta. So that's, that's a big change. But um, so it's taken me a little bit of working through to get my, I, I guess my workflow down pat to what I want to do. But it's great, fantastic. Now, one thing I will say about the modification is that with the Nikon Z series cameras, uh, with the native Nikon lenses, when you first turn them on, they focus to infinity up front. I've got the 20, the 35 and the 50 millimeter lenses and they all do that. Now, since this modification has been done, they don't do it anymore. So I've got to manually focus and you, <laughs> uh, I'm not looking for sympathy from you, but I have to actually make sure the focus is right. Uh, not that I don't anyway, but that's what you have to make sure once this modification is done. I don't know why that's the case. Normal autofocus works in, in daytime and other shots quite fine, exactly the same as the way it did before. Now, you're going to ask me about the colors in the daytime. Uh, this camera isn't uh, one I want to use in the daytime for photography, but you can do it. But as I said, the colors are off. So you have to make some adjustments to your white balance and various settings, etc. But I've shot quite a lot over the last month or so since I've had this camera with it. And I've particularly made use of the star trackers, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But before I get to that, I want to show you some examples of some of the images I've shot with this camera in the past few weeks.
All right, so here I am sandwiched between my two Star Trackers. On this side, I've got the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro, you can see here with the counterweight and everything added. Over this side, I've got the Sky Watcher Star Adventurer. Uh, now, I, I use both of these and, and they are both pretty awesome. But I'll tell you what, there are advantages to one and disadvantages to the other, depending on how you look at things. So what I've done, I've been a little bit cheeky. I've had, actually done a mix and match. So the first things first, on the Sky Guider Pro, and I've talked to you about the iPolar scope. I absolutely love this thing. It is making it so easy for me. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, remember. There's no Polaris out there to, to line up my tracker to. The iPolar camera, which is built into this scope, is absolutely a game changer for me. I've been regularly shooting two and three minute exposures off the bat really, really easily with any of my lenses, doesn't matter what my focal length is, getting good results. I'm sure I could go a lot longer, but to be honest with you, I don't really need to. I'm shooting typically wide angle shots here because I wanna add my landscapes into my shots. So that's my style. I love my nightscape images. And since I've been able to blend the night, the foregrounds in with the tracked night skies, as you've seen in some of the images, then I'm having an absolute ball by using these trackers. So I'm extending my skill set. Let's put it that way. But what I've done, um, I've, I've been able to compare these two trackers a fair bit, and they're both pretty good. To be honest, I, I would think you would be happy with either one. The Skywatcher Star Adventurer, I think, is probably a little bit more hardy and durable. It seems a bit tougher uh, overall, uh, whereas the Sky Guider is, is smaller and lighter. That Forget about all this uh, other stuff that's mounted on it. The unit itself, smaller and lighter, easier to transport around. Um, but the, the, the rotating base here is, is not good. Don't like it. Uh, it just seems fiddly and hard. And using, it's interesting because when I use the iPolar scope, I can actually see as soon as I do these up, the polar alignment changes. So by adjusting these knobs to get the polar alignment spot on, which I can do, but as soon as I tighten everything up, it's off again. So I don't like that. So what I did, I actually purchased um, a, a rotating base and you can see it here. It's a Faisal PB70 and it's just a simple panorama base really. And I put it underneath here so I can actually rotate manually myself. Now it's not an automated thing, but it makes it so much easier for me to get that, that movement this way, very accurate. And, and I tighten it down and nothing changes. So it's, it's only about 25 millimeters high, if that. So it's not adding too much height to this and it's certainly strong and reliable. There's no movement, no rocking, no nothing. So that for a very cheap investment, that's the first thing that I did. Now, one other thing you may be able to see here, I'm not sure you can, but I've actually put a Sky Watcher Star Adventurer wedge mount here underneath the Sky Guider Pro. Yeah, that's right. I'm mixing and matching because I find the, the Star Adventurer um, mount here to be far superior to the Sky Guider one. Now, I know you can buy William Optics ones and they're worth a fortune, hard to get. Uh, I already had one because of my old tracker. It's just sitting there doing nothing. So I'll put it on here and it is a much more sturdy mount. And the, and the Sky Guider Pro just fits on the top. So why not? Um, the other thing you're gonna see here, hopefully you can see it there, is our good friend Alan Wallace has invented for Move, Shoot, Move, the V-mount. Now I've got a V-mount, little tiny bracket here, which is fantastic, which lets you move I've got a ball head still, but it lets you move that ball head up on a different angle and just tighten it down. It's a fantastic little thing because it's so light and lightweight is important. So when I mount the camera up here, obviously the, the uh, balance point changes and having that bracket there so I can move it up and down and side to side is really, really good. And for the price of these things, they're not very expensive. So Alan, thank you very much, mate. You're a, you're a legend. And if you don't know Alan Wallace, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel go and give him a follow and he talks about this in one of his videos. Um, so you can see here on my Sky Guider Pro, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a, a Frankenstein. I've got the Sky Guider Pro, uh, Pro mount and the brackets, etc. here for the counterweight. I've got it mounted on a Skywatcher Star Adventurer base and on top I've got a Move Shoot Move uh, V mount base bracket. 
So that's three different manufacturers, but it works really well. Love the lightweight, small ball head, nice and light. It works, it tracks for, for forever. It's fantastic. Now, as far as this one is concerned, I've got really good results. I hate the poloscope in this thing. In fact, I hate the poloscope in any tracking mount because here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's not easy. That's why I love this iPolar camera. It just takes all the guesswork out of it. If they could invent a, a Wi-Fi app to work on your phone or tablet, this thing would take over the world. It would be so, so good. Nevertheless, all I need is a small computer and I've got a little 12, 11 inch computer, which is not much bigger than the tablet anyway. Um, so this one is still a fantastic mount and I can eyeball, yeah, that's right. I can eyeball the South Celestial Pole with this and still get really, really good results. Uh, it's not as accurate as this, but it's still pretty good. So I've been overall happy with both of these mounts. Okay, so continuing on my a camera consolidation project, when I got my original Z6 modified, um, I decided I'd sell off my Nikon D750s, which I've had for a while and a few other bits and pieces. So I've upgraded again. This is a Nikon Z6 Mark II. Okay, so now I've got the two cameras, Nikon Z6, you can see I've marked on the bottom of them, so I know which one's which. One's got a little red sticker because they look identical. The other one's got a white sticker and I've labeled them because out there in the field, sometimes you can get a bit confused with the cameras. And uh, so I know that that one's the Astro modified one and this one's not. Now I want to sh show you a couple of features I absolutely love on this Z6 Mark II. A lot of people say it's not worth the upgrade. Well, it just depends what you want to do with it. Now, I know there's improved features like the autofocus and things like that. Um, doing nightscape photography like I do, long exposure or landscapes or whatever, that, that really doesn't come into the equation. Uh, but what does come into the equation, and this is something I absolutely love, is the extended shutter speed range of this camera. It goes beyond 30 seconds. In fact, it goes up to 900 seconds. That's 15 minutes. So I can do a single 15 minute exposure with this camera, or I can do one minute or two minutes or three minutes or four minutes or five, whatever I want I can do with this camera. And that for nightscape shooters like us, that is absolutely fantastic. And I think it's something that should be in every camera, to be honest. I mean, it just makes things so easy. The other thing I love about that feature is that it actually has on the top screen here, because the Nikon has a top screen, when you're doing one of those extended shutters, it's counting down. So you know how long it's got to go. And I, I think if you're doing, a, a say, a two or three minute exposure, sometimes you want to know, oh, how far through am I? Now, I know you can see on intervalometers that you plug in. That's what I've typically used to get these cameras to go longer than 30 seconds in the past. Plug it in and the intervalometer will have a little countdown. But in the dark, you're fumbling around, you've got cables, you've got another piece of equipment. This shows it on that screen. So people who say the top screen is not important or not needed, I love the top screen in these cameras. I mean, I, I rave about these Nikon cameras all the time and I have done for years. I think they are absolutely phenomenal. Now, of course, I've got the Sony a7S III recording this right now. That's a phenomenal camera as well, but it doesn't have these features. That's fantastic. Absolutely love it. Uh, the other thing that I love about these cameras, this is even better, but even the original one, is the time-lapse features that are built in to these cameras. Absolutely fantastic. I've been experimenting and taking in-camera time-lapses, and they are great. I don't need an external intervalometer for any of this. And in fact, I've been experimenting a little bit with uh, day to night time lapses with using the inbuilt intervalometer. And so far, fingers crossed, so far they've been great. So I'm hoping uh, when the summer goes away and I can get a bit more better conditions, uh, I'm hoping to experiment even more, but that could well be another game changer. So I'm working very hard, but I absolutely love this new addition to the camera lineup. Now, before I finish this video, I just want to address a couple of little things. A lot of people are asking me, well, why are you changing the things that you've been doing for years with great success? Well, I'll tell you right now, I want to keep improving my craft. I need to do that because I want to add value to all of you who follow my channel. Now, I don't have to add Astro modified cameras. I don't have to buy upgrade my to a new camera. I don't have to buy any of the gear that I've got. I don't need star trackers to do awesome work. But, you know, it's part of my makeup. It's part of who I am is to try new things and try to make myself 
a better person, a better photographer. And that's exactly what I'm attempting to do with all of this equipment. Okay, so just to finish up, I had a great email from a follower of my channel, Tim, from the Oklahoma region of the States. And Tim suggested that he'd be uh, really interested to know what results people are getting when uh, adopting my fine art light painting techniques to their nightscape photography. Now, I hasten to add that this method of light painting has been used by many other photographers through the years. So it's not something I invented, but I have developed it to fit my love of shooting the night sky and landscape. So anyway, I thought it would be great to feature some of your images here on, on the channel. So if you'd like to be part of that, all you need to do is send me through an image to the email address listed below. Now, I want you to make sure you include the details of the camera gear and the settings you used, as well as the location and perhaps a story of your adventure. And I'll include as many as I can in a future video. All right, so that's about all I have for you this time. I'd love you to comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to catching up again soon, so you take care. See you later.